Hey guys, David here with another Hot Toys figure review. This time it is for, uh, I think, my first video game figure from the Hot Toys line that I've been wanting for a while, especially because this is the part of the mythology of one of my favorite superheroes, if not my favorite DC superhero. But this is the one that came first because it was slightly cheaper and because at the time I was scared that pre-orders were going to sell out. So I picked it up from BBTS and it is Hot Toys Arkham Asylum the Joker and here is the packaging which I'll tackle very very briefly and the reason why I'll tackle it very briefly is because you can kind of see it's a little plain it's not exactly the most involved packaging you see an image here of the Joker from the video game in fact in fact if I'm not mistaken this is concept art or artwork from the video game that they kind of just took and slapped it on here in the front of the box along with Batman Arkham Asylum 1 6 scale collectible figure the Joker serial number and then logos and what have you of course all in the vein of the joker color scheme so you got purple a little bit of green right there then on the top and the bottom you can see right there you got the batman arkham asylum symbol as well as the bottom and i kind of already spoiled it for you but there's the back with a giant ass a there for arkham asylum as well as that repeated artwork of the joker there in smaller scale along with again the color scheme you got the lime slimy green and the purple as well as various other little uh notes and doodads there at the bottom warning signs and what have you and then on the sides you just got in purple right there and then the joker little arkham type of symbol going on right there along with numbers and collectible figure yada 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 then on the side here we just have a continuation of that artwork from the front so you can kind of see <laughs> joker's disembodied uh arm there at the side as well as a really nice photograph there of the moon that is kind of synonymous with the arkham asylum imagery you see in the video game from rocksteady where you first step foot into the asylum and all you see is that really haunting visual of the asyl asylum itself with the pale moon light there in the back yeah, that's a slight little nod there to batman 89 and then that's really about it but of course as all recent or uh not arc i'm sorry but hot toys figures have done with their packaging you got a little fold out here where you lift it via magnets lift this out push it to the side and you got a little window display to showcase the figure in this case it's the joker figure with a nice little a there as well as credits for the figure and even the packaging right there with a nice little backdrop to kind of like again continue the arkham asylum motif now i'm glad that i i mentioned the credits here most specifically credits for the package designers and that is that i know i'm going to sound like a spoiled baby here but i do wish that hot toys would get a little creative with their packaging styles because if you guys remember from my review for Hot Toys Homecoming Spider-Man, the packaging was pretty much on par. It's the exact same scale, but more importantly, similar textures, similar design, similar make, and then you even got that little fold-out thingy-majig where it's got the exact same thing kind of going on. And it's pretty much the exact same situation here. And like I said, I sound spoiled, but I remember there were days where Hot Toys would get kind of creative with their boxes. They would get creative with that collective packaging, and I miss that. Uh, I mean, I, I wish I could bust it out right now, but it's actually in, inside of the, the brown carton box, and then it's kind of tucked away and put away, and it's kind of involved. But I remember when I first got Age of Ultron... Uh, Iron Man from Hot Toys and that packaging is super involved they had like two pieces and then inside was another box that was styrofoam and it had like cutouts of the title inside of the box it was it was crazy but it was awesome and now they're just result uh, resorting to this generic type of type of box which again it's not a bad box it's still collective it still has some nice little touches that I kind of appreciate like the textures you can kind of see within the lighting that you got a slight matte finish there but then you have a very different, much rougher texture here when you get to the artwork of the Joker. And the same thing kind of happens here with the little ha 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 so you can see there in the background. That they have a different texture that you can actually kind of feel. And you have that similar thing kind of going throughout the entirety of the box. But when it comes to the actual design of the box, I do wish that they got just a smidget more creative. 
So, enough of my little whining and dining, or mostly whining. <laughs> Let's get to the actual figure of the Joker from Arkham Asylum. And the Joker has arrived. So, here's Hot Toys Joker from the Arkham Asylum video game. As you can tell, one of my favorite things about this figure is the design. Because usually when they do Hot Toys figures on movie characters, they're mostly kind of modeled after an actor or an actress. So since here it's a caricature of a person, in this case a comic book character, they don't have to worry about rights, they don't have to worry about getting the right definitive features, they just have to make sure that they get a replicated image of that version of the Joker that we got from Arkham Asylum, which personally for me is one of my favorite versions of the Joker, both design and written wise. And that's why I opted to get the figure, because I've been wanting a Joker figure from that series for uh, longest time, at least one that is realistic, you know, it, whether it be from Sideshow or in this case Hot Toys. I do have one from the Has either Hasbro or I think Mattel, I can't remember who it was, but it's one of those six inch ones, but I wanted a photorealistic one. I'm glad to see that Hot Toys was the one that was given the, uh, the reins to be able to handle that. And I'm glad that they did because I'm loving the design. All of the clothes on the Joker's three piece suit is accurate. You got the little individual buttons on his vest. You got the different type of clothing uh, textures for each piece, whether it be the yellow shirt underneath or the jacket along with the little tail here in the back. You even got some pleathery portions going on right here in the shoulder, as well as the bow tie here, the little green bow tie, which is its own separate piece, as well as the pants. And you even got a little bit of his chain right there which I'm imagining is connected to a, a, a watch of some kind but my favorite article of clothing that is not necessarily clothing wise but it's just my favorite part of his whole outfit ensemble would have to be the shoes there's just something about the shoes and the way that they're designed sculpted and painted that just has me go wow look at those those are some nice kicks. Then you got his gloves. You even got the little dead flower here on his chest, which unfortunately doesn't rotate, but it's fine. It's still pretty, pretty design accurate. So I dig it rather, rather nicely. But my favorite part of this whole figure, to me personally, would have to be the head sculpt. The head sculpt is absolutely terrific because, again, they didn't have to worry about copyrights. They didn't have to worry about hitting that uncanny valley mark when it comes to replicating certain actors for the hot toys counterparts here it's an exaggerated caricature of a video game character so they can just kind of take away from the design of him in the video game and just do a 3d model of it pretty much and they replicated it to a t where he's got the crooked no it really long and elongated nose elongated chin the widow's peak here at the top with the hair design as well as the eyes, he really does look de delightfully demented. And my favorite part is the skin textures. The skin textures are very accurate. If you get really up close and personal with the head sculpt, it actually looks rather fleshy-like. I don't know what type of paint they used, but I love the shade of color as well as the different way that they apply the paint that really adds to that very sickly kind of look on his skin as well as the different little veins popping out here on the top of his head that really really hit home just how accurate this Joker really is and how terrifying and funny he can really really be so the head sculpt is ab absolutely amazing it's one of my favorite head sculpts that I've kind of played with a Hot Toys figure in some time and I'm glad to see that the body overall is also very well represented here with the little slim uh, skinny and terrifying figure as well as like I said how it works in tangent with the ensemble with the costume and how the three piece has uh, like different seams and buttons and pockets that really give that figure that premium touch now for articulation because you are dealing with a three piece suit you have to kind of coincide with those pieces and there's a little a few caveats here and there that I'm like alright yeah that's gonna be a potential issue there in the future but I think I can manage. For one, there's a ball joint here in the neck that is actually rather, rather cool because he's got some really dope articulation in the in the neckline where he's able to rotate it 360 degrees. And trust me, when I saw this, I, <laughs> I may have urinated just a tiny bit. Not shit, but just because it's the Joker doing this is just weird. It's just so goddamn weird. But he's able to rotate 360 degrees, as you can tell, as well as pivot 
downwards like so upwards about that far which is actually rather remarkable and then he's even got a slight little head tilt from side to side which I mean you gotta include the Joker you know he's gonna have his little mannerism so if you ever want to pose him in that really twisted way he's gotta have that little head tilt to kind of really throw you off so you got that you got I believe one maybe two joints in the shoulders I can kind of feel too but I'm not entirely sure and of course I do not want to risk removing the jacket because Hot Toys heavily advises against that but he does have some flexibility within the coat as well as the shoulders to be able to move the shoulders about that forward and as you can see that far back and then you can kind of put him in a little t-pose flexing the arms about that far up and then about that far forward but then we start to hit a snag there where it starts to stretch a little bit of the coat here on the sides where you can really see the tension kind of growing across the seams across the shoulder way here so maybe some measurements would have been refined there because they probably measured this as if it, he was going to be a little bit static in terms of positioning but flexing his arms about that high up you can start to see a little bit of tension growing there in the coat so that's a little bit of a downer he's got some really good possibility in the elbows two joints to be exact so he's able to bend all the way up but then we do run into a slight little issue but i feel like i can get past it and that's that because of the measurements of the coat like i mentioned uh, before with the shoulders you can see that a few of the uh, cuffs right here or the sleeves are starting to rise to up and or uh, down in this case since he has his arms up but you can see a little bit of the uh, figure form kind of protruding here and being exposed and that might maybe break the illusion for some people especially since you can kind of start seeing the joints here for the wrists but speaking of which the wrist does have a ball joint where he's able to move his hands up and down about that far let me demonstrate a little bit better about like that like that and of course 360 degrees so he's able to do that just depends on the way that you get it but he does have a vertical joint that's able to move up and down like so he does have an ab crunch it's just a little difficult to kind of get through because again the different pieces of clothing you're kind of dealing with the pants the shirt here slash vest and the jacket but he does have an ab joint and I guess it's not so hard to kind of move around especially since the pants and the the vest are kind of separated so you're able to go about that far back and then that far forward so it's actually rather remarkable kind of see a little bit going on right there yeah this is a really suggestive figure to say the least uh sorry I'm just feeling it okay all right so yeah he's got an ab crunch and then he's got a second joint in the waist and like i mentioned with some of the previous figures that i've been reviewing most especially spider-man because he's wearing essentially a unitard here you have a three-piece suit so since he's got the suit separated here at the waist which by the way i don't know if i mentioned but he's even got a little belt buckle right there with the joker face on it so i think that's pretty cute but since the pants are separated that allows for mobility 360 degrees if you like I just don't I, I suggest not doing it too too frequently because then you're gonna start wearing down on the joints and you might end up getting a really loose figure with a dude that's doing the hula constantly so you don't want to risk it then you got joints here at the top of the leg as usual but because of the pants you do have a little bit of restriction but not too bad and not and not as bad as the as the jacket here on the shoulders was but he's able to move it up about that far Moving it back, unfortunately, I think it's because of the body type, but I feel like he's not able to move the leg all the way back like like he was able to do it forward. But I don't think it's because of the pants. I think it's because of the body that they gave him, the uh, the specific body type that has like a, I guess you could say an ass restriction <laughs> that keeps his leg from going back all the way like that. So that's a slight downer. Uh, but then down here at the knee, he's got two joints. That's able to bend about that far just as much as the elbow was able to do but much like the able the elbow did with the sleeves you can kind of see a little bit of the legs of the of the pants starting to ride down here and similar to what we had going on with the wrists you can also tell that it's showing a little bit of the shin portion of the body right there as well as a little joint 
or the ankles. So if you're a master of illusion and you want to keep that illusion, then you got to make sure that you know about this. So let's put this back here. And as you saw before, he does have a ball joint here at the ankle so that he's able to move his foot about that far down, which is rather remarkable, really. That far up, which is slightly unrealistic, to be honest. And then he's able to pivot left and right. So the suit was measured slightly weird, especially because it feels like it was measured as if the figure was just going to be in the static pose. But I'm glad to see that I think where it was given the most mobility is exactly where it counts. Most notably, those ankles, because I could put him in a variety of poses that kind of establish his personality in terms of being crazy. Like I could have him be on his tippy toes, again, his neck kind of tilted back. He can kind of be like split up like this with his showmanship kicked back because of his ab crunch. He's able to do that and then extend his arms, twist them around slightly. Bend him right there, and his hand just came off. I don't know. Ruining the illusion. But he's able to maybe recite a little bit of Shakespeare, like so. And see, you buy into it. You buy into it. So, yeah, it's kind of limited in some places, but the places of articulation where it counts is where he's able to move around very, very freely, and I'm very, very appreciative of that. Complete with the head sculpt that I absolutely love and this accurate costume, down to even the little patch he has, he has on his knee right here that's replicated from the video game. This is actually one of the figures that I'm very, very ha happy with in recent memory. Even if it's slightly simplistic, I still enjoy it a r or an awful, awful lot because this is one of my favorite video game characters. Sure, he's a comic book character first, but the way that he, they handled him in the video game was just top notch. I just wish that they threw in some more accessories because this is the Joker. He's bound to have some surprises up his sleeve. Not so many here in Hot Toys little uh, collection. As you can see, that's kind of about it right here that you see here in the front for the, for the extent of accessories that he's got. Most notably, hands. He literally just has two established pair of hands. He's got the two that he's got on his body right now, which are the open hands. You got two fist hands. So if you ever want to kind of pose them, oh, actually not that one, sorry, my apologies. These two, no, not that one. <laughs> wow, what's wrong with me? These two right here. These are the two punching hands. And of course, if you were to replace his open hands with his closed hands, you can kind of put him in some poses where he's either handcuffed or he's about to punch Batman if you happen to have the Hot Toys Batman. So he's got that. And then he's got two more hands, but they're for the same hand. It's the same, it's the same hand, only in two versions. It's the same right hand, except one is designed to hold his trademark long barrel pistol, as you see right there which is actually one of my favorite accessories because he has a free-flowing hammer here in the back, which I thought could be cocked, but I guess not. It's just free to kind of give it that quality feel. But it's that trademark gun that he's got in the, not only in Arkham Asylum, but I believe the majority of the Arkham games right there, which is nicely designed and colored, so that's pretty neat. But then he's also got, specifically from Arkham Asylum, the Titan Formula injection gun right there of course with that joker touch of the little spiral red and white going on right there the purple motif and of course the little green crystal here in the back which again has a piece that feels like it can move but i don't want to force it so i'm just going to leave it alone what's kind of neat about this gun though is that they threw in some of the darts that contain the titan formula they're really really tiny so i hope they come across well on camera but they threw in three of these it doesn't actually shoot them, so don't get your hopes up, but you are able to take them and put them here at the front of the barrel, fit them in, and they fit right there. But just be careful, they do fall out. They don't clip into place, they just fit nicely in there, but nothing locks them down, so you gotta be careful with gravity. And you also gotta be careful with the darts themselves because, frankly, they are actually rather, rather pointy to the point where they could impale inside of your skin. They're actually that pointy. I swear to God, they can actually hurt. They actually hurt me when I took them out of the, the box, so be careful with those. But they're not too intricately designed. The only cool part is that the middle is made out of that that frozen 
jelly type of plastic that you can kind of see through so it gives it that touch like oh it's the titan formula so that's pretty neat and they give you three in case you ever lose one but you are able to fit them in there for added uh accuracy to the video game and then you got the other hand that is designed to hold the titan gun so if i were to take this hand here and just fit his index finger inside of the trigger you got this hand specifically made for the Titan gun, as you see right there. And then this hand has two, the index finger and the middle finger, the fuck you finger as I like to call it, that fit inside of the little trigger for this giant ass gun that he's got going. It just doesn't fit all the way through, so I don't know if maybe they molded it hard or differently, or if that's how it's supposed to be, but I don't know, I just don't get the same satisfaction as I do with the Titan gun. It just doesn't feel like it flows all the way through. He's actually pressing on the trigger, but that's kind of how it's supposed to be. Right about there. And that's pretty much what he's got kind of going. Like I said, that's the right hand. Unfortunately, that is it for the hands. So if you ever wanted him to hold his gun in his left hand, even though he's not exactly a left-hander, well, the kind of SOL, because that's it they just threw in these right hands and also this has happened to me a couple of times but you have to be careful with swapping out the hands because the joints come off with them and I know that this is a humongous hassle because it makes it easy for you to be able to lose these joints which of course if you do Hot Toys threw in a, an extra pair but it's really tough to kind of get out at this point you kind of need like pliers or something so you really have to be careful I'm gonna see if I could pop it in and then just hold on to the hand and uh, see there you go. So this one's a little bit of a bitch. Oh, oh, there you go. Got it. I got it So it's a little tough. So you just got to be careful with that Let me see if I could prop it back in there Take this hand and let's go with the Titan hand And put that in there only because I think it looks slightly better. It doesn't look so awkward He actually looks like he's holding it. So I'll put that Situate him here And do okay there we go I want to do this kind of replicate a scene from the game not gonna say any more than that in case by some chance you have not played Arkham Asylum do so come on you got the return to Arkham 2 pack for PS4 and Xbox one get that and they get Arkham Knight in case you haven't done so so there you go and then like I said you got this I wish you could hold it in the other hand but it's just the right hand so it's got to be one at a time. Besides those, though, they do throw in this rather cute chattering teeth set with a stack of dynamite inside. I do like that the little wind up here does turn around, but doesn't actually wind up. So you don't have to worry about exploding this anytime soon. But they threw that in there in case he wants to hold it. Actually, let me see. This is for shits and giggles. That's kind of where the open hand kind of comes in. So that then he can hold that right there there you go boom alrighty <laughs> I guess we'll just complete the ensemble here but I don't know why they threw this in because I don't remember him using it and in any of the Arkham games but it's the Joker sure why not they threw in these like little hypnotizing glasses that are oddly designed because the Handles here or the frames are designed weird where you got the little handle here on the bottom of the lens rather than at the top and the Quality of the actual build could be a little bit better. I'm actually rather terrified of breaking these damn things, but Putting them on his head is actually rather satisfying I'm surprised by how they were able to kind of design the little ear hooks here because they fit in rather well with his head You put him over to where they're supposed to be and they actually snap in place rather Rather satisfyingly, right there. They, in fact, if you do them the right way, you'll hear like a little click where they just snap onto his ears. And there you go. He's ready to style, as Mr. J always does. So even though I never saw this in the game, as far as I can tell, it's neat that they threw them in and it adds to the personality of the Joker. And then his last little accessory here before we get to the base are these handcuffs, which you did see him with at the very beginning of Arkham Asylum, where he's brought in after the, the uh, after the Batman captured him 
And they do open up. They open up in the really most unconventional way. They open from the top as opposed to the bottom where normal handcuffs do. But I guess for an action figure, they kind of have to do that. Otherwise, there's going to be complications. So I dig it. And I like that they're neatly designed. You know, they're nothing too intricate, but they're still a really cool addition. It's cool to kind of role play. Like I said, you could put them in those poses where it looks like he's being brought in, especially if you do have that Arkham Silent or even Arkham Knight Batman from Hot Toys, which I do plan to get, but not anytime soon. I kind of want to kind of want to pay off some credit card debts but i got the handcuffs here which are re really nifty and they even have this chain here in the middle which i do believe it's made out of metal the only little fallacy here that i kind of have to overlook because again it's an action figure they have to throw in uh some just a justification for this but this chain in real life is a little too long to the proportions of the handcuffs that i'm like yeah he, he could strangle somebody with this i mean i know you can strangle anybody with any handcuffs technically but you see the length of this? I feel like he can do pretty much really anything with this type of slack in between each cuff, but that's just me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just nitpicking and whining at this point. The real little issue I have is that I think they could have thrown in one other thing. I don't know what it is. Maybe a jack-in-the-box inside of a little gift box that I think he did use in the Arkham games, most notably Arkham Asylum, and I'm pretty sure he's got, he had way other things, maybe even a, a Joker card, like a legit Joker card that he can hold, along with maybe a second pair of hands where he's able to hold the gun in the other. I would have liked something like that, but I think they held back a little bit on the accessories, which with any other character I wouldn't have minded too much, but with the Joker, it's the Joker. He's always got to have something planned. He's always got a plethora of gags to make us laugh with. And the only other thing that we're kind of left with here is the traditional Hot Toy Space, which you see right here. And you see right there, you got a little image of the Joker from the game. In fact, I believe this is a straight up screenshot of him with some moody lighting, of course. But I believe I've seen like some promo material for Arkham Asylum using this exact same image. But they kind of blended it in with a little design here of the Arkham Asylum itself at nighttime, the Batman Arkham Asylum logo, and then of course on the front, a little silver plaque that reads Batman Arkham Asylum, the Joker, in that traditional Arkham City font, no less. So it's a neat little base, and of course you got the little stem here to kind of hold up the figure. But the only little issue here, and I, hope, I don't know what to hope for, if this is every single base, or it's just mine that happens to be a defect. Because, swear to God, this damn thing does not fit onto my base i kept looking and looking and i've tried and i've tried as hard as i can it does not go in no matter how hard i force it and trust me i do not want to force it too badly uh, granted it's just made out of plastic but i, I want to you know preserve this as much as i can i spend good money on it and it looks like uh they made or etched out this rectangular hole here a little too small for this peg to fit through because it's not going through and I look at the sizes of each and it does look like this is slightly wider than this hole really is so it does look like I have some sizing issues here which I normally have a tendency to get when I'm really stressed out in life but I don't want to hear in my action figures man with my base most notably this one because I do want to be able to display him and I'm glad that he's got some good footing. He's got some good well made joints and like I said some really good footing developed well, not only with the ankle joints but also just with the way that they kind of created the shoes. I feel like they lucked out here because Joker's got those really elongated stylish shoes that he's able to give himself some proper footing and be able to balance himself well. I mean he's barely he's barely moving as I blow on him so that's pretty neat. But I, I would have liked to have posed them with the base, just like I like to do with any other Hot Toys. And it looks like I got a dud here, because this does not fit in. If you guys are familiar with little issues uh, re revolving around defects in Hot Toys figures, please let me know, who do I contact? Uh, I got this from BBTS, so should I hit up BBTS, or should I hit up Hot Toys? Who should I contact to at least get a replacement base? That's all I want. A replacement base... Not even the stem, probably just a base with... Because I'm looking at the little sticker here of the design that has this little texture here. And it does look like that was designed to be the adequate size, but the actual plastic was not etched wide enough. I think that might be the issue. And again, it could just be a dud. If you guys have 
Hot Toys Joker from the Arkham Asylum video game. Please let me know if you came across that issue, but until then, it looks like Joker's gonna be baseless. But I guess if I can't display him with the base, then maybe I can settle with displaying him with the little carton display representing Arkham Asylum there in the background, at least the gate that we first see at the very first shot of the game that Hot Toys went ahead and threw in. So at least you can kind of put this together. It comes in the little cardboard stand, so you just gotta assemble it slightly here with these pieces that kind of don't feel like they're in the right place. But anyways, whatever. I can just kind of put him forward here, put the display right there, and then just have him kind of stand in front of it. And there you go. So I could do that, but it doesn't matter because he is the Joker. I'm terrible at that. I'm sorry. I'll just, I'll stop now. But only Hamill himself, as his Twitter handle dictates, can be our beloved Joker. And I'm not only am I still to this day very grateful of the version of the Joker that he gave us, but now I'm even more happy that Hot Toys was able to take that Joker and give him the Hot Toys treatment in a very accurate manner. I do wish that they threw in some more accessories, and again, I have yet to confirm if this is just a defect or if it's a mass problem with various other bases of this particular figure type, but at least the figure itself, which is where it really, really counts, is one that I'm really, really happy with. And it's really, really curious considering how simple of a figure he is because he's got a simplistic design that is straight up lifted from the, from the game, but I think that's where they really excelled and shined because they were able to capture that really creepy and, and humorous personality from his facial construction, the head sculpt, and the way that the body kind of works with the costume that complements it. So I'm going to be giving Hot Toys, the Joker from Arkham Asylum, a very, very high 8 out of 10. It would have been an excellent 9 or a low 9, somewhere in that kind of territory if they threw in at least a couple more accessories. I would have settled just for at least an extra left hand so that he can hold a gun or something else in the other hand. Or at least a Joker card or just something a little bit more emblematic of our favorite uh, clown prince of crime. Until then, I guess we'll just settle with maybe a third party of some kind developing extra accessories or just something to kind of add to the experience of owning this figure. And maybe I'll check them out. But for the time being, I'm happy with the figure. I just think that they could have done more with them in the accessory department. Uh, but furthermore, please change up your boxes. I want some better boxes, guys. Yeah, come on. I know you can do better. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and putting up with my little whining and nitpicking. I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel. Please let me know in the comments, guys. What do you guys think of Hot Toys, the Joker here from Arkham Asylum? Do you think that this is a very decent representation? And do you think that we should at least maybe be in the know of whether or not Hot Toys would be, con uh, or at least consider giving us an Arkham City the Joker because he is a slightly different interpretation. He's got a new, a different coat of uh, of warts that you can kind of throw in there. So Hot Toys, get working on those warts. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and share this video. And of course, subscribe for more Hot Toys figures and maybe even some other figure reviews coming very soon. Until next time, see you all later. She gets fully fleshed out here as the more she gets involved with Peter. To the point where it's almost like you start to unwillingly get frustrated with Peter for being such a horny bastard. I think Liz Allen really is into me. Gwen too. Gwen, Liz, Liz, Gwen. God damn, I'm surprised Peter didn't go after Flash's mom. Mom? Really surprised. My spidey hormones are tingly.